Hey everybody, I wanted to take a second to talk to you about some wood carving tools that I've been using. One in particular, Drake, um, an American wood carving tool company. Um, and that's going to be the focus of the video. But first I'm going to go over some of the tools that I use in my wood carvings here very briefly. Uh, I got a few flex cut tools. I mostly like flex cut. I'm about 60% good with them. Um, there's some of their tools I won't even buy. I have one palm gouge and I don't care for flex cut palm gouges, which is why I only have one. It's about 15 years old. The varnish gets a little gooey over the course of time and I don't like that. But otherwise, I gotta say, I really like flex cut for the most part. Um, I really like their um, they're whittling tools, but I don't whittle. I like the more European style carving. I got some dog leg tools. Flex cut that I really like. I find myself reaching for those quite often. Got some mallet chisels. All these are good. No problems there. I really like these ones. The problem here is that on some of the larger ones, they can be a bit uncomfortable in the hand. So if you squeeze them, here, I'll see if I can turn the camera around and show you. Squeeze them like this. It gouges into the hand. It gets a little uncomfortable. So the way to do that is to turn it to the side so that the pad of your hand goes down into the groove, or excuse me, into the dip of the, the steel there. And then put your fingers underneath it like that. That's all you got to do. That's all it takes. Problem solved. Um, but that's only on the larger ones. But I like them. I find myself reaching for them quite often. Got a strop. Saw, I don't know who makes this. I found that at Rockler in a little miter box. A couple of um, flex cut straps. And I got some hardware store micro tools. Probably made for steel. I can't believe how much I use these things. Constantly use them. And I keep all the stuff all rolled up in here. I got some miscellaneous stuff. Glues, varnishes, and drill bits, so on and so forth. Got a little brush to clean out the, uh, my files on my rifflers. Um, and I am not a purist. I will use a Dremel tool. I prefer to stay away from, I mean, I use a power tool to remove the bulk of the material from a carving. Um, but as I really get into the carving itself, I don't use power tool. That's basically the only power, that is the only power tool that I use. Um, but I'm not anti-power tool. I mean, there once in a while, there's a situation where I could really use a power tool and I won't hesitate to grab it. Um, but my preference is hand tools because I like the resistance that the wood offers when you're carving into it. You can feel that resistance and that means a lot to me. Um, I got a lot of bits for the Dremel tool. Here's an interesting little pendant that I made for a friend and I never actually got around to giving it to them. Made it from a piece of ebony. Okay, I have a Mora knife, which I really like a lot. A carving glove. Could have had that a while back. I could have prevented that. An old antique draw knife. Just a pocket knife. Um, oh, another tip for anyone who's new to wood carving or wood carving tools. Don't buy anything made from stainless steel. Make sure you got good carbon steel. Carbon steel can be hardened. Stainless steel, don't, don't use that. But a, but a pocket knife, this is stainless steel, but a pocket knife comes in handy. Fibonacci calipers. I'm not a firm believer in the Fibonacci sequence. Um, I just, I'm not sold on it, but I will use it occasionally in reference. I got a, um, a diamond plate that I use for sharpening. Also got an electric sharpening tool that I'm not going to show in this video. Um, this is the first wood carving tool I've ever owned. It's an X-Acto knife. My mom bought this for me when I was about eight or nine years old in uh, Dayton's downtown St. Paul, Minnesota, and I still have it. Actually, I think this is the original handle, but it doesn't tighten down, do good no more. It's old, so I had to upgrade it. Um, these are British carving tools. These are crown tools. They're made in um, good Sheffield steel. Um, I don't have any preference, really, for carving tools. It's a tool, it takes the wood off. I find I really don't care too much. Um, but good steel is good steel, and Sheffield steel is good. And now that was, I, now I learned about that from Alexander Grabovetsky. If you're not familiar with him and you're a woodcarver, you probably are familiar with him. 
He's a, a Russian-born woodcarver who lives in Florida, and he is just fantastic. On par with Brindling Gibbons, if not better. Um, and I'll provide a link to him below. Definitely swing by and check out his videos, his wood carving school. There's a lot of wood carving schools out there. Most of them are online, especially with the pandemic. And his school, Alexander Grabovetsky, his school is the only school that I subscribe to and invest in. The only one. I'll watch other videos by other carvers, of course. But his is the only <clears throat> Excuse me, his is the only one that I actually invest money in. Is the best wood carving school out there. So definitely I'll provide a link, check it out. But um, yeah, he told me about Sheffield's deal, and I, over the course of time, I agree with him. Sheffield, England. Sheffield Steel. Good stuff, excellent tools. Set of six that my brother gave me. I plan on getting more. I got some tool roll with some rifflers in there. These are cheap Chinese rifflers. Another bit of advice, don't buy a carving tool from China. Don't buy any product from China if you can help it, in my opinion. Um, these are the last tool that I will ever buy from China. They're cheap. However, they are useful. They're good for removing bulk, grinding off bulk. This is an American chisel, I believe, that I got at a hardware store. Antique chisel, I'm not sure where that one came from. And this is a Swiss riffler it is what does that say on there nicholson it's swiss made this thing is fantastic i'm getting more i don't have enough rifflers i really like them here are my dockyard tools good american made tools i reach for them a lot i use them all the time obviously i have room to get some more i have a bone to pick with this company when i got these things I mean, I was just disappointed in the quality. I think the tools should be polished all the way up and down the shaft. Um, the ends, look at how chopped up and, you know, gouged up the ends are. One broke on me already. Um, I believe the steel's pretty good. But look at how gouged up that is. It looks to me like they just buy the hexagon, if that's what that is wood in bulk, cut it to size, and then they sharpen it in an electric pencil sharpener. I would guess that's actually exactly what they do. Um, I like them. I'll get some more of them. But I got to say, you guys over at Dockyard, clean up your act. You can improve the quality on these things. Why stop just short of the finish line? I used to work in plastics um, in a fab shop for six years. I know my way around a fab shop. If I was working for your fab shop at Dockyard, I could do better quality than this. Yes, I could. Get on that. You can do better than that. They're good tools. Work on the quality. Here is a little burnishing tool. It's made for fishing lures, but I found it useful in burnishing wood. I really like this little thing. I found it online someplace. A thumb guard. And here are the tools I probably reach for the most. Here's a good Buck Brothers tool. It was in a toolbox in the garage. I bought it years ago for I can't remember what, honestly. But mice got in there and urinated all over it, so I cleaned it up and scraped off the rust and sharpened it up. And this tool is responsible for that nice little cut that you see on my thumb. I find myself reaching for this Buck Brothers tool a lot, but I don't know the history of the company. Here's an old screwdriver that was broken. I found it on the floor in the fab shop I used to work in, and I sharpened it to a point, and I find it pretty useful. Here I've got a tool roll. Uh, this was, these were given to me by, by my older brother, and so were these, with the exception of the Marples Irwin tools. But um, all these, and this wasn't in there, this wasn't in there. But, okay, um, good Swiss file tools. I like them quite a lot. Um, these are Marples Irwin. I don't know the history here. I've heard that Marples merged with Irwin. I've also heard that Irwin bought them out completely. Um, I don't know, honestly, where they're made. Um, they may be made in China. That's a problem for me. I'm not a fan of any product out of China. I play harmonica, and I got issues with Chinese brand harmonicas. I don't like them, so I'm not a big fan of any product that comes out of China, I'm biased. I'm against them. I just, I just am. That's just how I feel. 
I don't like all the tools coming out of China. Definitely don't like to buy Chinese tools. Won't buy any more of these Chinese. Um, the constituent parts here for Marple's Irwin tools might be um, Chinese made, shipped to the United States and assembled here. I don't know the stories of, uh, story there, but these are actual old school Marples. And I really like them. This one holds a, an edge great. I don't know where they're made. Uh, Marples made in Marples, England, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Don't know too much about them, but I like them. I like them. There's a wood carver who's got a shop up in St. Louis Park, Minnesota, and he's got a lot of these, but I, I don't think he sells them. But um, oh, here's a um, router plane that I made myself. This is just some old chisel, I think, that somebody made out of a file because you can see the file marks in it still. I got that at an antique shop for a couple of dollars, and I made my own. router plane and it works great it's one of the few homemade tools I made that actually works good I use it don't use it a lot but I you know when I do use it it works great and anyway those are all my basics I need more and that brings me to the focus of the video that would be this little beauty here now Alexander Grabovetsky I asked him if he had ever heard of an American wood carving company called Drake and he said he had he said a student at one of his seminars had some he didn't own any himself um, I was trying to compile a list of American wood carving tool companies and uh, FlexCut is of course the most famous like I said I'm mostly okay with their stuff I like them mostly I really don't have a preference in tools I, I really don't um, it's a tool that takes the wood off that's fine if it's made a good steel comfortable in my hand, I'm okay with it. I just avoid Chinese stuff, but I, I was trying to avoid, uh, excuse me, I was trying to assemble a list of American wood carving companies, and I stumbled upon this one, and I asked Alexander Grabovetsky if he'd heard of them, and he said yes, he thought they were excellent. And I don't have any palm gouges, save for the one flex cut. Let's see if I can get this off of here without cutting myself. I'm going to set the phone down here. Got that stuck on there pretty good. There we go. So this is a this is a Drake skew a palm palm skew I guess you'd call that. And I haven't had this for too long, about a week or so, and I have been using it. And I'll show you. Here's a carving I'm working on at the moment. I am building a tiny house on wheels. You can see that elsewhere on my YouTube channel. This is going to be the door to the loft. I got a thing for carving hummingbirds, and I'm working on my skill carving um, flowers. It's got a long way to go. It's nowhere near finished, but I've been using this tool on it a lot, and it's been fantastic for getting behind the flowers. I carve from either side. I just turn it around. Um, this has been, you know, I've had a, a, a week and a half, and it's been indispensable already. It holds an edge beautifully. The steel is absolutely superb I have heard that they import Swiss steel which is high carbon steel supposedly the um, handles are made from local wood I can't remember what state they're in I think they're in Washington I have a brochure somewhere around here I have to tell you and all the time that I've been carving off and on over the course of my life just got on really into it again here been carving intensely for the last five years or so this is the finest wood carving tool I've ever had in my hand I love this thing that much it's just absolutely top-notch superb quality through and through American quality this thing is phenomenal I cannot overemphasize how much I love this tool Razor sharp, holds an edge beautifully, strops easy as, you know, you would expect. Um, I heard that they actually don't recommend that you grind it. They say strop only because of the, the steel. I, I don't know off the top of my head what the number of the steel is, but it's good quality carbon steel, supposedly Swiss steel, for whatever that means, 
high quality carbon steel. I know it's good. Polished all the way down. I really like that. They didn't stop halfway like they did with the with the dockyard tools. They're only partially polished. I complained about that already. The dockyard's got some work to do on their stuff. And I still like them. But as I said before, the only palm gouge I've ever owned is this flex cut and I don't like it very much and I'm not going to buy any more. I like flex cut tools but I'm not going to buy any more of their palm gouges. I bought that. That one thing's probably 15 years old if not older. I am however going to buy more Drake tools. I originally didn't really want to invest much in palm tools but Drake has changed my mind about that. Um, they got some gorgeous tools. I will absolutely provide a link. This is literally the finest carving tool I have ever had in the palm of my hand. Hands down, no contest. And I got some good ones here too. Swiss, who can argue with the quality there. Marples, great stuff. British Crown Tools, Sheffield England, great stuff. Mora Knife, superb. But this thing outshines them all. Um, no complaints, nothing much to say about Drake other than I absolutely love them. American made carving tool. The only suggestion that I will make to Drake, if you guys see this, to, uh, if you see this video, and I know you're going to see it because I'm going to send it to you. You guys at Drake, it makes such beautiful tools. And I know the rest of them are like this because I look through the website. These tools are so fantastic. You guys are awesome. I cannot overemphasize the quality of this tool. This thing is fantastic through and through. Superb, true craftsmanship, finest American quality. The only thing I would ask of Drake is in the future, would you guys consider making tools like this mallet gouges chisels and such two-handed tools like this if you guys could bring some of those to the market i think you'd probably get a lot of business you'd get some from me i guarantee it so yeah you guys just keep on doing what you're doing drake i'll provide a link below they also make um whittling knives like this this is of course this is flex cut this is not drake but they make stuff along I actually like these flex cut whittling knives, but I don't whittle much. But if that's your thing, Drake makes tools like that. So go there. I cannot, they need to be more well known. And I'm hoping to help them generate some, help generate some business for them because I'm so impressed with the quality of this tool. Just blown away. I was so that. I got this thing in the mail and I open it up and I, my jaw just hit the floor. You just know good quality when you see it. And This thing is a beauty. I'm going to be buying more. I will provide a link below. Please, guys at Drake, consider making this style carving tool in the future. But that's all I got to say. Drake, all the way. Probably our finest American-made wood carving tool. And that's pretty much where I'm going to end this video. Check them out. Take care. I'll talk to you later.